Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at the parasite that could be living inside you right now, Toxoplasma gondii. If we were to tell you that there is a parasite out there that can infect virtually any warm-blooded creature on Earth, is found just about everywhere, approximately 33% of humans are infected, and is also mysteriously linked to people committing suicide and brain cancer, then we told you that it was most commonly found in cats, you'd say we had to be lying because cats would be extinct if we all knew that. Well, if they weren't so adorable. It turns out we're not lying, and the truth gets even more interesting. Known as Toxoplasma gondii, the parasite can cause a disease aptly called toxoplasmosis in virtually any warm-blooded creature it infects. Luckily for us, toxoplasmosis is rarely, if ever, fatal in any species. That said, it is still a very major concern to the scientific and medical community. As noted in a worksheet released by Stanford University, toxoplasmosis has a very high mortality rate when people with a weaker immune system, such as patients suffering from HIV or AIDS, are infected with it. The disease is also noted as being very dangerous to infants and other otherwise immunocompromised patients. So, how do you catch it? Well, there are several well-documented and universally agreed-upon ways in which an ordinary person can come into contact with the parasite, and hence the disease. First, there's raw or undercooked meat, then there's pasteurized milk, there's raw or unwashed vegetables, and also cats. As a fun bit of trivia, the link between eating uncooked meat and the parasite was conclusively proven when scientists in Paris fed orphans nearly raw beef, horse and lamb meat to test the hypothesis that the parasite could be transmitted in this way. If you're hoping this happened hundreds of years ago, it actually took place in 1965. Oh, and the orphans were also housed in a sanatorium, a building for treating people with long-term illnesses at the time. If you're now disgusted at the French for allowing such experiments on orphans, it should be noted that to test penicillin's effectiveness in treating syphilis and other STDs, researchers led by Dr. John Charles Cutler from the United States, funded by the Public Health Services, the Pan American Health Sanitary Bureau, and the National Institutes of Health, headed to Guatemala in 1946 and found prostitutes who had syphilis, getting them to then give it to unsuspecting Guatemalan soldiers, mental health patients, and prisoners. They also directly infected certain individuals by direct inoculation Calculations made from syphilis bacteria poured into the men's penises and on forearms and faces that were slightly abraded, or in a few cases through spinal punctures. It isn't known how many people died as a result of this, as the results from the study were never published. If you think that one's bad, check out the infamous Tuskegee syphilis experiment, where about 600 American citizens were told they were getting free healthcare, when in fact the physicians were just studying how untreated syphilis progressed, many to death as well as spreading it to others as they were told they didn't have it. Dr. John Cutler was involved in that one, too. He faced no consequences for the people who died in his experiments and even had an illustrious and celebrated career, including, at one point, becoming an assistant to the U.S. Surgeon General. So, needless to say, there are bad eggs in every country. But we digress. In regards to cats, they are noted as being the definitive host of the Toxoplasma gondii parasite. In fact, it can only sexually reproduce when it is inside of a cat. However, it can asexually reproduce and live indefinitely inside the body of virtually any warm-blooded host, like a human. Since Toxoplasma gondii parasites can't complete their life cycles inside of us, though, we are defined as being intermediate hosts. Alright, so before you go out and murder some adorable kittens, we need to stress that the chances of catching the parasite from cats, if you're doing anything other than handling cat feces directly and not washing your hands after, is infinitesimally small. So much so, in fact, that owning a cat is not considered a risk at all in terms of acquiring Toxoplasma gondii, unless you're pregnant. This is due to the fact that Toxoplasma gondii parasites can be passed from a mother to her child while she's pregnant, and as no a severely weak immune system, such as the baby has, is a recipe for death when acquiring the parasite. However, even this generally isn't much of a risk unless the woman in question first acquires the parasite while pregnant. But given the consequences include potential death to the child, it's recommended to be ultra careful concerning this parasite when pregnant. Otherwise, you're probably going to be fine.
We say probably here because although the vast majority of people are perfectly safe from harm from the parasite, up to a third of people worldwide are infected with it. Yes, that is one in three people. Further, about 40% in the US have been exposed to the parasite at some point, often in unwashed vegetables or undercooked meat, and about 15% of people in the US have the telltale cysts in their heart, nervous system tissues, and skeletal muscle, with each cyst containing many thousands of the parasite. However, it's likely that the vast majority of these people will never realize they're infected and never suffer any ill effects as a result of the infection. As noted by the official Public Health England website, the symptoms of toxoplasmosis in ordinary healthy people are usually nondescript and mild. If any symptoms do show up, it generally only happens when you first acquire the parasite, and these are simply mild, flu-like symptoms that last a couple of weeks. So in the end, despite the fact that a third of the world is infected with this parasite, unless you have a crippling disease that's ravaging your immune system, are getting an organ transplant, or are a tiny baby, it will probably never bother or affect you in any way. Again, we do say probably here because there is a growing but as yet unproven concern that the parasite can cause a number of mental health problems. For example, research conducted by the Maryland School of Medicine found that women infected with the parasite were 1.5 times more likely to attempt suicide. Other studies have linked the parasite to even more alarming health issues such as schizophrenia and even brain cancer. By far the most fascinating thing about the parasite, however, is its apparent ability to control the mind, or at least the behavior of certain of its hosts. Specifically, rats infected with the parasite will become unusually attracted to the scent of cat urine, a scent they'd usually avoid like the plague. Terrifyingly, the parasite seems to accomplish this by completely and permanently overriding the rat's natural fear of cats and their distinctive odor. Instead, the rat becomes intensely sexually attracted to it. Needless to say, this makes it much more likely that the rat will be eaten by a cat, which allows the Toxoplasma gondii to get inside its preferred host. As of yet, thankfully, no such mental change has been noted in human beings. In the end, our own immune system keeps the majority of the symptoms, and by extension the parasite, at bay. When it doesn't, for example, in immune-deficient people, the subsequent disease often results in death with initial complications including encephalitis, inflammation of the brain, and pneumonia. And now for a bonus fact. On February the 10th in 1355 in Oxford, England, Walter Springhuse and Roger de Chesterfield, two students at the University of Oxford, got in an argument with tavern owner John Croydon over the quality of the drinks he was serving. In the end, drinks were thrown in the face of Croydon, after which the two students attacked him. Soon the fight spread, with local townspeople on one side and Oxford students on the other. In the fight, students at the university even assaulted the mayor of Oxford, John de Bereford. This riot lasted two days, leaving 63 students and about 30 locals dead and many more injured. For the next 470 years, the mayor of Oxford and its councillors had to march through the streets of Oxford on February the 10th each year with bare hands, as well as give one penny annually for each of the students killed. This finally ended in 1825 when the mayor refused to do the penance. So I really hope you enjoyed that video if you did please do hit that like button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already also over there on the right a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one and thank you for watching